digitally controlled RF for microwave phase shifters can be readily realized on ICs. The most common approach is the switched filter topology. This works because the insertion phase of a low pass filter is retarded and the insertion phase of a high pass filter is advanced. When we switch between these filters, the phase shift versus frequency is flat. A cascade of binary weighted phase shifting bits can be used to realize a digitally controlled phase shifter with 360 degrees range. One of the key performance metrics for a multi-bit phase shifter is RMS phase error. We're going to look at simulating RMS phase error of a digitally controlled multi-bit phase shifter using Agilent ADS. We'll be using this 32 to 38 gigahertz 5-bit design as the vehicle for our demonstration. It has been designed on a quarter micron PM process and includes control logic to allow single-ended control of each bit. We can start by looking at the simulated performance of one individual bit. We select the 90 degree bit. Between ports 1 and 2 we have the sub-circuit of the 90 degree bit with a low pass branch activated. Between ports 3 and 4 we have the same sub-circuit but with the high pass branch activated. Within the 90 degree bit sub-circuit foundry models are used for all passive components and the switch transistors are simulated using measured S parameters. These blocks are ideal switch functions which are used in the multi-bit cascaded analysis but deactivated during simulation of the individual bit. If we simulate we see that this red line is the insertion phase for the the low pass branch and this is the insertion phase through the high pass branch. The relative phase shift versus frequency which is over here is approximately constant and close to 90 degrees. Another design goal is to keep the amplitude difference low. This is achieved through careful optimization, and we can see that we've achieved this. In order to simulate the performance of the phase shifter in all 32 states, we included ideal switches at the input and output of each bit, one here and one here. They are included purely to facilitate simulation in all states and do not affect the RF performance. Controlling the ideal switches allows each bit to be simulated in either its low or high pass state. If we descend into one of these switches, we see that it's simply made of two resistors which are either very high impedance or very low impedance depending on whether the variable switch on is zero or one. When this phase shifter is placed in a high level schematic a value of zero or one must be assigned to each of its five bits. By altering these bit values, the phase shifter can be simulated in each of its 32 states. Here is the high level schematic in which the 5 bit phase shifter has been placed. When this schematic is in use in a test bench, it requires a value for the variable VDEC 
which can be any integer from 0 to 31 and is used to step through all the different states. This equation block encodes VDEC into a 5-bit word, which in turn is used to control the 5-bit phase shifter placed here. Notice that there is a second placement of the phase shifter below. All of its control bits have been set to zero, which represents the low-pass mode. This placement is the reference path and the phase shift is the difference in phase between this reference path and this top path. Here we have the top level test bench used to simulate the phase shifter in each of its 32 states. If we simulate the complete phase shifter, we can show the performance in all states versus frequency and this takes around 30 seconds. Now, we need to include appropriate equations to calculate RMS phase error. They appear here. This top equation is used to define the variable raw phase shift, which is the phase difference between the two paths shown earlier. This is calculated for each state and each simulation frequency. OK, the simulation's finished. I'll just minimise the results and come back to them later. If we go back to the equation block, we're on this second line here. And this is an equation that defines ideal phase shift, which is the phase shift of an ideal phase shifter. The next equation defines raw phase error which is the difference between the raw phase shift and the ideal phase shift. When we take the mean value of the error in all phase states to get mean raw phase error, there is one value of mean raw phase error for each simulation frequency. This is subtracted from raw phase error each state and at each frequency in this line in order to calculate corrected phase error. And finally, we calculate the standard deviation of corrected phase error to arrive at RMS phase error. This calculation is carried out at each simulation frequency point. Going back to the results, you can see here the flat phase shift versus frequency response in each of the 32 states. And here the amplitude response showing only a small variation from state to state. We can see a plot of the RMS phase error versus frequency and we see a nice low phase error of less than 1.4 degrees from 32 to 38 gigahertz. If the RMS phase error was higher than our design target, we would need to improve the phase accuracy of the individual bits. Poor return loss for the individual bits can also impact RMS phase error as well as the cascaded return loss. Our simulated phase error looked good, so we proceeded through to layout and detailed EM simulation. This is the final layout of our 5-bit 32 to 38 gigahertz phase shifter. More information about how to design phase shifter ICs can be found on the PlexTech RF integration website www.plextechrfi.com